Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now, we have Billy Thompson talking about commit messages I've seen. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Billy some feedback. Awesome. Hi, um, I'm Billy Thompson. Uh, I'm a contracting PHP developer. Um, mostly I do sort of team leading type stuff. Um, and my personal pet peeve, uh, I know everyone has one, is really, really bad commit messages. So I'm going to give you a, a little rundown, some, some tips on how to write awesome Git commit messages, and hopefully be able to justify why you should write them that way. Okay, so uh, for those who like to skip around uh, during the talk, during the presentation, here are the actual seven tips. I'm not going to go over these right here, but when you're going back through the slides, you'll thank me. Okay, who here has seen a git commit message like this? Fixes. I know that I have. Um, they're not very useful, um, and it's lacking a few really basic things. So the two initial really basic things that I want to introduce you to with a git commit message is both a subject and a body. So a subject is the top line of your git commit message, uh, and then you should have a little gap, and then a body. And that looks a little bit like this. This is a really short example. Um, there's a number of different reasons why you should do this. The primarily, primary ones being that um, you should actually be able to use this capitalized summary this summary at the start of your messages to uh, act as a reference when you're doing rebasing on merges, because Git will actually put this uh, next to those little arrows where it tells you you've got a conflict, or if you're doing an interactive rebase on the list of commits that you've got to merge in. Okay, uh, so this actually comes from the Git commit manual. Um, they give you a really nice little uh, tip on how to do it, um, and I'll come back to some more examples from there later on. Okay, so um, this comes on to my next, my next little tip. So uh, keep your subjects nice and short. If your subjects are longer than 50 characters, then this happens. They start getting wrapped. Now, this happens on GitHub, but it also happens on the command line as well, and you might find that your command messages are being truncated from the logs, which is um, really unuseful. So keep your subjects at most 50 characters. Yeah, so here's a little bit uh, version of the template. So you can see short print messages, more detailed text if necessary. Okay, uh, and this little tip comes from the Git SCM book, but you can see it in action on GitHub all the time. There's little, little dot dot dots. Okay, so this is another really really simple little problem that's super easy to resolve. Capitalize the subject line. Unless you're doing typography for a fancy novel or something like that. Uh, make sure that you capitalize the titles of things, um, particularly in English, I'm not sure about other languages, but um, make sure you capitalize the titles just like you would capitalize the subject line uh, to make it really, really clear that um, you're writing about the title of something. Um, yeah. So this actually comes from the uh, Tim Pope's uh, fantastic blog post about how to write really good commit messages. Uh, he's kind of written the template, which has been copied and pasted loads of different places, and I will send you. A I'll give you a link to that a little bit later on. Okay, uh, and this follows along a similar vein of how to write uh, really good Git commit messages, and this is all about the title again. So you'll notice here there's a full stop at the end. Don't put a full stop at the end of your subject. You don't need to. Um, you wouldn't do it if you're writing the title of a paper, so don't do it with a commit message. Uh, yeah, it's super simple. Okay, uh, this starts where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Now, this is all about uh, when you write a git commit message, when you write the title, the subject of your git commit message, you should make sure that it's in the imperative term. Now, if you suck at English, like I do, which is why I went into software development and not, and not uh, becoming an English professor or something, um, I had no idea what the imperative term is. So the imperative is things like um, when I push the button, I fix the bug, um, 
Now, this tone is really important because it's the same tone that is actually used by Git itself. So we have uh, merge pull requests from GitHub and merge branch. These are all in the imperative tone. So some more examples would be um, fix, not fixed, revert, not reverts, create, not created. So I fixed the issue, <laughs> fix the issue on live, uh, revert the previous commit, create a new entity. Okay, so this kind of brings me on to problems with the body. So here you can see um, this is what happens if your body is longer than 72 characters. It starts to get wrapped. Uh, out of all of the tips that I'm going to give you today, this is probably the least important. Um, it is really useful to provide a nice user interface to the git commit messages on the command line, but actually most things will handle this pretty well now. Uh, I tend to try and stick to this anyway. Um, it does make your commits look a little bit nicer when you're searching through them or when you're trying to show them to people on the command line. Uh, yeah, so here you can see we've nice got a nice little body and it's 72 characters wide, which makes it easy to display. Okay, so now I'm gonna come along to my final point. So my final point is all about writing a really good commit message which tells you what and why something does something and you don't just write something which is just repeats what's in the body of the commit itself. Anyone can see what's in the diff already. So uh, my top tip for this is write like an issue. So if you think of a uh, the actual commit mission, the issue that you're trying to fix with a specific commit, then you can find that actually it has quite a lot of different things. So the issue has maybe a way to replicate the specific bug. It has um, maybe a definition of uh, the particular scenarios in which this happens, some potential solutions. Um, and if you consider the implementation of the bug, the actual story which explores and defines what the actual problem is, then your commit should be the conclusion. Your commit should restate what the problem is, it should state what the uh, actual solution was and any implications that that has. You probably don't need to uh, restate what's actually in the git commit diff. So here is a full little template for you to use for how to write a really nice git commit message. Now, there's some really nice resources here. Uh, firstly, I would actually strongly advise you to read the gripping, I promise you it's a gripping read, uh, the uh, git commit book. It's really good. Um, there's some really interesting, insightful things in there. Uh, particularly uh, chapter five, section two, um, has got a really nice bit on git commit messages. And obviously the man page for git commit itself. Uh, and Tim Pope has a fantastic article about how to write really good commit messages. Now, uh, just before I go, the reason that I'm sort of on here talking about this, just recently I wrote a little tool which makes it a lot easier to make sure that you're following these standards. Um, so I implemented a git commit hook that will make sure that you're following these basic standards as recommended by the uh, GitHub manual pages. Um, yeah, so if you want, you can go use it, or actually you can forget about this and uh, go, re uh, go just do it manually. But, um, if you are writing a really nice git commit message, you're going to find that over time that your git commit log starts becoming a story, a story of features that you've implemented and references to issues that have been fixed. And it will become really, really easy to pull out a specific commit and start rolling back the things that you don't want, if you perhaps have a bug in something, or to know why a particular feature was introduced and what was the reasoning behind that. Git commit messages are really powerful and are somewhat unvalued as a resource. So uh, yeah, so that's been my quick lightning talk on Git commit messages. Um, uh, I'm Billy Thompson. Uh, you can tweet me at Hub Booth. Um, yeah, has anyone got any questions? Nope, no questions at the moment. Uh, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP lightning talk. If you'd like to give a lightning talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit joined in and leave Billy some feedback.